Well, if you're looking for beautiful, rare, and unique cars, here we have one, a 71 Plymouth Sport Fury furnished in Mood Indigo Iridescent Paint. Yes, this is an original paint color, one year only. What a handsome car these fuselage vehicles were, and take a look at the height difference between the Fury on the right and the Cadillac. I mean, the cowl is about three or four inches higher off the ground on the Fury, and that's just how these fuselage cars were from Chrysler. But really interesting, beautiful design. This came out in 1969, lasted through 1973. Unfortunately, the 1973 model year to me is not that great looking of a vehicle just because of the front end, and they had to incorporate the five-mile-an-hour bumper standard into it. But this Mood Indigo 71 Sport Fury really just exemplifies the best of the fuselage there. And this is a very, very rare four-door hardtop, of which only 4,813 were made in 1971. So you're not going to really see this anywhere else. Notice the concave back window, a bit a la Chevrolet from the late 1960s. And I have no idea why Chevrolet put that on a low-end car. I mean, obviously, they had the economies of scale to do so. But Plymouth, when you're not selling many Sport Furies or nearly as many Furies as Chevrolet selling Impalas, had to be pretty costly for them. It's tough to see here, but Plymouth always had a good complement of gauges. This does have a full set of gauges and not idiot lights. They're included within the speedometer at the top there. And these seats are quite nice, kind of like a high back bucket a la Ford Twin Comfort lounge seat uh, with an integrated headrest. Really nice design, handsome design, great cloth pattern on these as well. The fuselage era cars also continued on with Plymouth's what they called torsion quiet ride, which was introduced in 1957 with the longitudinally mounted torsion bars up front as well as the leaf spring rear suspension. And these cars, you know, people, when you, they see them or you talk about them, they often say, oh, you know, it's ride so soft, it's like riding on a cloud. No, actually not. Uh, if, you, if you drive one of these Chrysler cars of this vintage or really any Chrysler car, kind of from that 57 all the way up to the late 80s time period, their index was more toward handling versus ride. Ford was the inverse. Ford was much more toward ride versus handling. So you got a good-looking car here. Uh, boy, and what a great front end. Well, they Plymouth advertised this loop bumper and flat front end as being better than the Ford Galaxy for the year because the Galaxy had a point to it that they said would be uh, challenging and easy to ding when you're parking. Now, at back, they have the same big loop bumper, which they also advertise versus Ford as being a good protection feature. And at the top right, they have... The curbside trunk unlock. So the trunk unlock is over on the passenger side there. That was a selling feature that they had in this year. Overall, beautiful car. And like I said, they, they ride pretty firmly for the era. And that's good and bad. I think some people really like that ride. And some people didn't necessarily care for it. And for whatever strange reason, not sure that the seat engineers always talk to the ride engineers at Chrysler because their seats are really springy. And sometimes you get this pogo sticky motion up and down, not because of the ride itself, but because the seat spring and the ride seem to be have interfering resonant frequencies. So in any event, what a beautiful car, especially furnished in this one year only mood indigo paint. The owner also related to me that it was a dealer demonstrated car and uh, some collectors had related to him that this was a car that was ordered as a dealer demonstrator specifically to drive showroom traffic. And two per state were ordered, making it one out of 100. Those cars had this mood indigo paint with white vinyl tops, air conditioning, heavy-duty transmission, light group, high back bench seat in this black vinyl and charcoal brocade, and a 383 two-barrel engine. So... Again, just a great fuselage era Chrysler. This one does have road wheels that aren't technically correct for the car from a Barracuda, but certainly look nice on it. The owner also related to me that he's upgraded the engine to have a four-barrel carburetor as opposed to a standard two-barrel carburetor. There are lots of engine options in this year for the Sport Fury. Everything from the 318 two-barrel standard with 230 horsepower Optional 362 barrel with 255 horsepower. 
optional 383 two barrel, which this car has with 275 horsepower, an optional 383 four barrel with 300 horsepower, and the top dog, at least in the Sport Fury, was the 444 barrel with 335 horsepower. Now, you could get in the Sport Fury GT a 440 cubic inch four barrel with 370 horsepower. That was only offered in the GT, and those are exceedingly rare vehicles, but also as handsome as this one is that you see here before you. Let's close out with an interesting ad from Plymouth that describes the overall value that the Fury provided to the customer in 1971, which is pretty typical of Plymouth ads for the time. They often highlighted price over features, although they did have some good features as well. Mrs. Gibbs, I'm a little worried about my son, the doctor. He spent all his money on a fancy new car. Now that I'm invited to dinner, he has to cook outside. <laughs> oh, mama, we're having a barbecue. Besides, the Plymouth Sport Fury isn't that expensive. I know a big quiet limousine when I ride in it, with all the opticals. Options, Mama. The refrigerator, that didn't cost money? Oh, that's an air conditioner, Mama. How much did the casserole recorder cost? Cassette recorder, Mama. A big successful doctor has to talk to himself? Oh, I use that for dictating. And what about the hole in the ceiling? You know you should get money back for that? Oh, that's the sunroof, Mama. Such an expensive automobile. Mama, believe me. The Plymouth Fury is not an expensive automobile. What's the matter? Your practice isn't doing so well. Well, as you can see, Plymouth really touted its value, but certainly also had great styling that was quite remarkable for the time. And the 71 Fury is one of my favorites, and the fuselage cars in general from this era I do admit to liking the 72 Grand Fury just a bit better, or any of the 72 Furies with the hidden headlights. I think that that hidden headlight with the loop bumper theme is just a super, super cool look, and it lasted for just one year. I almost bought a 72 Plymouth Fury Coupe, but it didn't have the hidden headlights, and it just didn't have the same panache to me. So still on the lookout for one in excellent condition. In any case, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks again for watching. Thanks again for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe as that helps the YouTube algorithm serve it up to more viewers like you. And until next time, be sure to check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you. Stay tuned for more videos from this particular car show coming up soon. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, take care.